Hi everyone, welcome to tonight's live on nat Natural Childbirth 101. <clears throat> As we're waiting for everybody to join us, I just um, want to say thank you to everybody who joins us and I hope so much uh, that tonight brings you some insight and that I can reach out and um, help you to find those incredible tools that lie within you that maybe you haven't understood how to put together to uh, create things in your life that you've always wanted to. And most importantly, we talk about birth and um, pregnancy, but you know, birth and pregnancy are part of our lives. Um, breastfeeding, our children, those are all part of our lives, but our life also goes on. And I think tonight I want to share with you some things that relate not only to pregnancy, birth, postpartum, babies, breastfeeding, but our life in general and hope that it gives you some tools as you go through life. Um, this week I had some opportunity to kind of do a little bit of soul searching. Um, my, uh, my life was telling me that I needed a bit more rest and so I took and listened to that and I began to rest more and to listen to what um, my body wanted me to understand about why I needed more rest. And sometimes I think we're going and going and going and going and we need to be able to take those moments to stop long enough and quiet our minds, take a breath and just listen to what our uh, wisdom wants to talk to us about. So. In understanding the title of tonight, it is Ownership. What do you love and value in life? And I want you to think about, you know, maybe one or two of the topics. Now that may be, your, if you're pregnant, it may be pregnancy. What do you love and value about your pregnancy? Or maybe it might be, what do you love and value about your care providers? Or what do you love and value about breastfeeding if you're nursing a baby? Or what do you love and value about work if you're a, a working uh, parent? Um, maybe you have uh, various people in your life. You have a partner or you have uh, siblings or you have friends or coworkers or maybe you do some things in the community. Um, I want you to say to yourself, what do I love and value about fill in the blank? So pick one or two topics to just kind of keep in your mind tonight. And let's see what comes up for you. So I want you just for a moment to take wherever you are and just sit quietly. Now I happen to know that one of you has a brand new baby. Probably more of you have a brand new baby. Some of you are waiting for a baby. But I want you to just take that moment and I want you to just close your eyes and I want you to take a breath and let it out and take another breath and just let it out and let it go. And now think for a moment about one topic, whether that's pregnancy or birth or breastfeeding or your children your partner, your friends, somebody in your family, your work, if you work outside the home, or your work inside the home, whatever that may be. And I want you to just think about what that is for just a moment, and then take the phrase that says, what do I value and love about fill in the blank? And then just let that come to you for a moment. Just take a moment and just let that inner wisdom within you get really, really honest. What do you love and value about? All right, so now you've had a moment, not a very long moment. This is such a simple exercise that you can do anytime, anywhere, for any reason in your life. And taking a moment to look at something in your life, maybe you're struggling with it, maybe you have un uh, 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 questions that are unanswered, maybe you absolutely adore it, 
But when you ask that question, what do I love and what do I value about it? It gives you some insight into who you are as a person. What makes you tick? What gives you the power and the ability to take ownership, right? All right, now let's take this a step further. Whatever it is that you're thinking about, whatever topic it might be, let's, um, <clears throat> let's imagine for a moment that you knew enough about whatever that topic was, but you wanted to know more about it. You wanted to do more with it. You wanted some better answers. You wanted to figure out what you really want to do with that. Maybe it's that you want to redecorate the house. I don't know. It's whatever it is in your mind, in your heart, in your life. And <clears throat> when we think about that and we say, I love and value my fill in the blank because of these reasons. Now, when I do that, when it comes to my work, I find very clearly that I say, I love and value motivating, inspiring, and educating people to become empowered and take ownership for whatever their process is. Now, once I homed in on that, like you can home in on whatever your innate, honest wisdom is inside you, you begin to become aware of how to figure out what you want to do with that situation because now you have a value system to it. Now you have what you love about it, what gives you joy, what gives you happiness in it. When you can do that, it helps you to evaluate if what you are currently doing or what you're planning to do or which roads you're trying to take may be the right road for you. Okay, are you with me so far? All right. Now, <clears throat> some of you may be familiar with the uh, way to do certain things called a do be have. Okay. And what this is, is that you take a piece of paper and you write the word do, another column that says be, and another column <laughs> that says have. Now, if you take I love and value whatever that is that you are feeling in that honest wisdom within yourself, but you want to do more with it, or you're a little confused as to which path you want to take, then you write in the have category what it is you want to have. So since this is Natural Childbirth 101, I'm going to take it to, say, um, pregnancy. All right. So if we think of pregnancy and we say, I want to have a healthy, normal pregnancy, or I want to have a pregnancy that goes past 37 weeks, or I want to have a pregnancy that go goes before 42 weeks or I want whatever that is and then you take and you go back to the do and the be so it says if you want a pregnancy that's going to go um, before 42 weeks let's say then what do you have to do and who do you have to be okay and so what that is is what you might have to do is you might have to take some herbs, you might have to come to acceptance, you might have to utilize um, things that help you ripen, right? And what, who do you have to be? You have to be someone that is on task, on purpose with what you're doing in order to have what you want. Okay, let's take this to something a little bit simpler in life. If you want to have your children go to bed happy, then who do you need to be in order to, sorry, yes, who do you, what do you need to do in order and who do you need to be to have your children go to bed happy? Okay, so to go to bed happy, what do you need to do? And that might be, oh, I need to slow down. I need to spend some time with them. I need to read them a story. 
explain to them what our day has been like, give them a massage, whatever it is that your innate wisdom is telling you. You need to do that. And who do you need to be? Someone that is willing to do that. Be someone who is willing to take the time, the energy, and the effort to create that so that you can have what you want, which is your children to go to bed happy. Another thing, children going to bed happy. What do you need to do? Avoid things that would create frustration, upsets, and anger. So who do you need to be in order to avoid, in order to not have those things, but to have a positive situation, right? So it's a very simple tool to use. And you want to use everything that is positive. Once you have that positive, then you begin to say, I'm going to sit with what I can see. I can see my children and I doing, say, story reading and a little foot massage before going to bed. I can see them being able to calm down and be willing to giggle a little, be thankful for the day, and maybe that's one of the things you bring in. What are you thankful for today? Tell me what you did today that you are thankful for. And be able to let them wind into bed because you are taking the time to give and to listen and to create a pattern for them to go to sleep with something good on their mind. So therefore, night after night, that becomes easier and easier. But you sit and you imagine that you are doing that with your children. And you imagine that, you, that your children are also working with you. And then you let go. And then you do what you said. You be who you need to be. And then you take a little bit of time to allow that to happen for you. Now, it's, it's not rocket science, just so you know, all right? But understanding ownership when it comes to having a healthy pregnancy, let's say, or having a smooth and progressive birth. Now this is mind, this is remembering that I understand that things do come up. But in order to create that, who do you have to be? What do you have to do in order to have a healthy pregnancy? You have to eat well. That means you need to be willing and thankful and happy to eat well. Because then you can have a pregnancy that goes well, a birth that goes more smoothly. If you want a birth that is not a baby in a posterior, where it's back labor and a harder labor, or possibly even a cesarean, what do you have to do? You have to learn how the body works, which I've talked numerous times about, in how to get babies into good positions, right? And you have to be willing to do those things, which is the being is about the ownership. You have to be willing to take ownership for your life, for what is going on, for what you think, what you feel, what you do, and even the things that go on around you. Maybe there's things going on around you that aren't really going well. How are you going to take ownership for you in how you're going to think and feel about that situation? If a night doesn't go well with the kids, or if you go to work and things don't go well, or you're in traffic and things are not going according to time and plan, you have a choice to take ownership and say, I'm going to look at this as an opportunity. I'm going to look at this from a positive standpoint. What are my children trying to tell me if things are not going well at bedtime tonight or they're having a meltdown during the day? What are they trying to tell me? They need more quiet. Maybe they've been going around too much. Maybe they need some, some sit down with parent time. Maybe they need a get out and climb time. I don't know, but you will know but you want to ask that question. All right, if this is not working, what is it that it's telling me that I need to change my mindset or change my heart or change what's going on in my environment in order to have what it is that I desire? So <clears throat> when you begin to apply these things in your life, 
there's a choice between making it happen, which is not always the best choice, and understanding what you want to have happen and creating the opportunities for that to become possible. It comes, number one, from thinking and feeling it before you ever do it, before you ever achieve it. And that comes from getting quiet, breathing, thinking, and really feeling it as if it was happening. We go back to that motor rehearsal I've mentioned before because athletes use this repeatedly. They know and they understand. If they can see their race, if they can see their gymnastics, if they can see their jumps, if they can see things in their mind before they do them and feel themselves doing it as if it was already happening, there's something that begins to transpire in them and all around them that begins to happen. If you have never tried this out in your life, begin using it. Begin playing with it until it begins to become something you understand. When we take this <clears throat> into our lives with our partners, and if there is something going on between you and them, come inside. Find out what your ownership is in the process. If it's about your pregnancy and your care providers and something's not going right. Come back inside. Find out what it is within you. Are you not communicating? Are you not asking enough questions? Do you need to state what is right for you? Do you need to change care providers? Do you need to change where you're having the baby? If breastfeeding is struggling, what is it that you want to have happen? And then do and be what it's going to take to make that happen. Now, watching wonderful, wonderful parents work with breastfeeding who are willing to do anything that it takes, and still there are challenges, I understand that happens. It is not about failure. It is always about success because you're doing everything and being everything that you can be to have the best outcome possible. And sometimes with birth, with pregnancy, with breastfeeding, it's called the best outcome possible. Because some things are just what they're going to be. We understand that in life. And so that's where I want to say to you, once you go through imagining and creating that, if you're going to create your birth, imagine it. But imagine it from a place of expansion, not from absolutely detailed. I want at 6 o'clock for my water to break. I want at 6.05 the contractions to start. I want at 6.10. That's trying to take so much control because of fear that it won't. You want ownership. That means settling in to what you know is in that inner wisdom that we talked about when we first started. What is it that you love and value about you? You as a parent, you as someone that is pregnant, you as someone that gives birth or gave birth, you as someone that is nourishing and nurturing your baby, be it at breast, be it breast milk, be it at bottle, because it all, all ways are a way that we nurture our babies. Be it that your baby is getting older, they're children. What is it in you that you love and value about yourself? In our society today, we are seeing in the younger generation, which many of you may be in that generation, that our social media may be where we get our self-worth and our self-esteem sometimes. Such as if you are someone who has had a breastfeeding experience that didn't go well. And when you read online, everybody's showing you how breastfeeding is so wonderful. Everybody's saying it's the only thing you should do and that it's the best in the world. And within you, you're like, 
but I did everything, everything possible. But that was not the best thing for me and my baby's story. That you have to find what you love and value within you and not feel that what you see out in social media is always what makes you who you are. Take it and understand it and also use your social media to build and strengthen your self-confidence of who you are, taking ownership for your life because if things are going on in your life or in your situation, in your pregnancy, in your birth, in your breastfeeding, in your parenting, take ownership for that and not guilt, not remorse because those will not serve you in any way, shape or form. Take and say, I'm listening. I hear you. Whatever that is. If we have children that are struggling, if we have a pregnancy that's talking to us, we have a birth, I'm here. I'm listening. Tell me what you need from me. Tell me what I can do to help create the best possible situation. And when you do that, you will begin to take more and more ownership for your life. Be able to use your circumstances and understand how to begin making corrections in them so that your life is more joyful, more happy, more enlightened every single day about who you are and the amazing person that you are to this world. Did you know that you are that way? You are an amazing person in this world. Without you, the world would not be the same. You bring color, you bring life, you bring excitement, you bring diversity, you bring newness to this world, no matter who you are. And for those of you that are pregnant or maybe have young babies, you know at the end, I tell you to go in and hug them, right? And tell them how amazing they are. You're telling yourself to, because you created them. Now, even if they were from adoption, they were created by a wonderful person who was wise enough to give their baby to you, to raise and to love and to nurture. In other words, finding that wholeness, finding that ownership, finding that wisdom in any situation in life. So utilize, whenever things are talking to you, what do I love and value about this moment right now? Whatever it happens to be, all right? When we do this, we are like a pebble. And for those of you who live local, I don't know, and I would love for you to just take a moment while we're talking and just blip out to me where you are right now. Are you on the couch? Are you in bed? Are you at the kitchen? Are you with your children? Um, are you walking by the river? Uh, where are you? when you're listening to all of this. And think about the fact that if you were to go down by a river or a lake or a stream and you found a pebble, this pebble has called you to it because you picked it up. And if you throw it into the river or the lake or wherever you are, it, aw, it ripples, doesn't it? You're like that. We all are. We all are like a pebble thrown into water. And when we throw it in, such as we, th we put something into our heart, our lives, into uh, our children's lives, it ripples out. And you are somebody that ripples out. Think about what do I love and value about what my ripples will be in life? What will I share with the world? and my children, my partners, my family, and knowing that everything must start from within, go out through your, your, your partner if you have one, out into your children, into your extended family, and then into your community. And those ripples will carry. Our children carry our ripples. No guilt, okay? Because there's always moments and there's always days that we get a little out of balance with things because we're all different personalities and it's not just you 
that's dealing with life, the child is dealing with life and figuring out their way of rippling out. And they begin to learn that when they have the grumpies, you know, it kind of ripples out. There's a, a, I think it's a Dr. Seuss book that's called, um, uh oh, I think I just lost it in my mind. I'll come back to it in a minute. <laughs> um, uh, oh, now it's going to haunt me. It's a book about a, uh, oh, the little bird that went ka -choo. And the bird went ka which then knocked a, I don't remember the exact story, but basically knocked a, a coconut off, which hit the monkey on the head, which then the monkey thought it was somebody else and started getting mad at them. And it, you know, it was that rippling effect only to come back and realize that all the bird did was say a chew <laughs> and it started an effect. You and I and your children have the capacity to begin a rippling effect that can bring greater joy greater happiness and greater love to anyone that you are around, including rippling that out, right? So when you start your day, start your day with a smile on your face and say to yourself, what do I love and value about myself? And let that begin giving you some strength for taking ownership for how your day is going to go. The other is before you go to bed at night, and this is why I mentioned it about your children. When your children and you go to bed thinking about what you're thankful for in the day, what your day has done well, what you're thinking about of positive things, and then you go to sleep, you be, I, I, I feel like you dream positively. I feel like your heart is calmer. Because we know with children, if they go to bed crying and upset, they wake up kind of in a bad mood. Because all night long they've been trying to resolve that. And that's how we are, you know. When people say never go to bed angry, that's why, right? Because it's harder in the morning. So we want to be able to take that. I enjoy so much coming and talking with you on Wednesday nights. And it's always... Uh, an amazing opportunity to find out what it is that we're going to share with each other. Um, because I, I take it on what's coming up. Now, I'm not a big astrology person, but I do take into heart that Mercury goes into retrograde three times a year or four, I can't remember. Anyway, Mercury's ready to go into retrograde again, and it is a time that it causes us to slow down, to think about things to know that there's going to be delays and interruptions and things don't always work right and computers and internets and all these kind of things that go on and it's an opportunity for us to go okay all right just slow down take my time listen and learn and every day make today count because every day is really the most wonderful day that you have and when it comes to pregnancy, I know there's aches, there's pains, you're not sleeping as well, the baby gets moving around at night and it wakes you up, you get heartburn, you get burps, you get back aches. I, I hear, I know, I hear you. And I hear that there is an opportunity to look at that and say, but I have a healthy baby on board. I love and value my body because I have a healthy baby on board and my baby is moving around in me and I am grateful that my pregnancy is going well or I'm grateful that I have had the help that I need during this pregnancy to keep my baby healthy or birth. Birth comes with a tremendous expansion of who you are, what you do and your power your power is, is the, one of the biggest that it ever is, is when you're giving birth. And you're expanding the entire sense of who you are to allow this new being to now expand into their world, right? To come from that, that, that womb world out into this expansive world, which is so much bigger. And being able to bring them into the arms and cuddle and love them so that their world feels loved and secured. 
You know, I thought about that the other night and I thought I am so grateful, excuse me, so grateful when I see a baby in its parents' arms right after birth and that they are encased in that beautiful bubble of love and the world stops and pauses and, and says, let's just be peaceful and quiet for a minute and let this baby be here. Let this family embrace them. Let them be welcomed with the joy that this family has. And I relish that particular moment in all of midwifery for me. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me. All right, so I'm going to um, send you forth this week. Hopefully that gave you some thoughts and some ideas of things that you can do to evaluate whatever situation that you're going in and whatever challenges that you may have to find the way to love and value whatever is there so that you can be truly honest from within and be able to make changes if they need to be changed or more of what's already working. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me tonight. I am going to close down um, and, I, and if you have brought lots of questions, if you'll feed them off um, through the, uh, the feed and be prepared for next week because we will do a lot of questions for next week. Um, and don't ever hesitate to um, send me a message off and say, I'd really like to hear this topic, whatever that topic happens to be, and I'm happy to share what I know. So thank you for joining me tonight. Go in, hug your children, then give yourself a hug. Remind them that they are amazing and that they can do anything that they set their minds to and that you love them so much. And even if they're sleeping, they will hear that from your heart, even if it's not from your voice. All right, have an excellent week. Stay warm. As you can see, we're in sweaters now. And, um, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.